I am now in the Shuangle Township in Santa County in Sichuan Province. It's about 170 kilometers from the provincial capital Chengdu. Actually, Shuangle is a lower-income rural area in China. In 2014, when the country's targeted poverty alleviation initiative was in launched, about 10 percent of its villagers were put on the poverty list. And over the past few years, great changes have taken place here. Now let's take a look at this Chinese typical rural area and its efforts fighting poverty. Located in the northeast of Sichuan province, Shuangle Township in Santai County is about 170 kilometers from the provincial capital Chengdu. The township consists of nine villages and has a population of about 13,000. In 2014, when the province targeted poverty alleviation initiative started, some 480 households with an annual income of less than 2,730 yuan were listed as needy families, accounting for about 10 percent of the township's total population. Thanks to efforts from different levels of government through the years, the number of households in poverty has been reduced to a mere 30. This is Song Guanmiao village, one of the three villages on the poverty list of the Shuangle township. With a series of policies and measures in place, most of the people of the township are expected to be lifted out of poverty by 2018, two years ahead of the country's goal to build a moderately prosperous society. We've been carrying out poverty alleviation work from two expats. First, we help the targeted families solve basic living problems, such as housing, medical and education, matters as instructed by the central or provincial governments. Then, the county government assigns government employees to help the families seek solutions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So far, most villages have developed proper industries based on their own conditions as the fundamental way out. This has provided local farmers with many options, getting income from farmland transfers, working under agriculture cooperatives, and reaping profit as shareholders. In this way, Wang Jiayan, another village classified as in poverty, is experiencing favorable changes by developing large farming and some other industries. We have established five cooperatives so far and have also made much progress in infrastructure construction. With the joint efforts of cooperatives, I believe we'll accomplish more in the coming years. Township head Wang Kaizhi says it will take a few more years to consolidate the achievements and further improve the quality of villagers' life both materially and culturally. As such, related policies and measures will continue even if a family is lifted out of poverty. Actually, this is just one example of Chinese rural areas in poverty and its way of fighting poverty. During the recently concluded National Party Congress, General Secretary and President Xi Jinping said the country will continue to impl implement targeted poverty reduction and alleviation measures to ensure that by the year 2020, our rural residents living below the current poverty line have been lifted out of poverty. So I believe more changes can be expected in China's rural areas in the years to come. And China's anti-poverty pledge actually was made back in 2013 at the 18th National People's Congress. So how have these efforts evolved over time and what seems to have worked the most? Actually, over the past years, the government at all levels have made great efforts to help the families in poverty to address the urgent problems such as housing, medical insurance, and education. Now most people on the poverty list can live in relatively better houses and enjoy almost free medical service and basic education. And in some rural areas such as uh, villages of Santai County, government employees are all assigned to help the needy families on a one-on-one -on -one basis. They are required to maintain close communication with the targeted families and help them to seek solutions. This has come as an effective way to help the poor, poor farmers to get out of poverty. Meanwhile, most of the villages are trying to develop proper industries and the farmers can benefit in different ways as I have just mentioned in the story.
For example, they can get a certain of income from the farmland transfer to the agriculture cooperatives and also get employment opportunities. Actually, this should be the fundamental way out of poverty, Mike. And you've been meeting with these farmers, the villagers. Uh, what are some of the stories that stand out most for you? What are you going to remember when you uh, leave that area? First, what has impressed me most is the new look of Chinese rural areas. Take the village where I am staying, for example. Its infrastructure is a lot better than I have expected. Almost all the families have been connected with uh, cement roads. The power and the water supply and a radio and TV coverage are all available right now. And now the government is also speeding up the internet construction in these areas. This actually will greatly reshape the life of farmers. And I, as I have just mentioned, the village is now developing different kinds of in industries according to the market demand. Uh, such as loach farming in this village. But actually problems still uh, remain to be addressed, such as the care to elderly people left behind as most young people choose to make a living in big cities. Actually, this is a very common phenomenon, not only in this village, but also in the vast rural areas in China. And as people's livelihood keep, keep improving, so how to help them from the uh, cultural aspect may be another problem we need to think about.